Hello my soccer universe and welcome to a long overdue review of Serie A. We have to cover two rounds which is rather unusual. However last week I have to say the round was so impacted by the upcoming Champions League games especially that it felt kind of anticlimactic to talk about these and I knew that it is always better to look at it in hindsight. And then on top we had the Juventus suspended verdict in 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 a way that we definitely also have to talk about um speaking of juventus i will talk about the verdict ver in a bit but speaking about juventus they actually are in a really really rough form i mean you thought that the 15 points uh, back will actually lift them right in safety of a champions league but no anything but they had three losses in a row some of them are rather 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 embarrassing but then uh, it also has to that the last loss was then against um, a Napoli team it was a little bit tight at the end but now surely now Napoli are champions that Raspadori goal it uh, many dropped the parallel between when Koulibaly scored at the Juventus Stadium I think it was almost the same date I think only a day difference uh, to give them a stoppage time winner now it was uh, Raspadori giving them stoppage time winner but it feels differently that Napoli title was inevitable. Back then it was kind of desperation. Uh, maybe we can get back into it and it quickly fell apart. Whereas now we have we are only a week away, potentially, maybe two, of Napoli celebrating the title. The only thing, the way I see it panning out is that Napoli will not be able, unless they kind of mess it up and say, let's make the suspense a little bit more, they will not be able to celebrate in the home stadium because either it happens uh, with a delay because a game will be played later or they are winning it away from home and now this is assuming that they win the next two games which probably they will um but with the juventus verdict and again i'll talk the details uh, we also got there's a little bit more pressure on the top four race because at the moment you uh, instantly you got catapulted into space three and that means Milan, Roma, Inter, potentially Atalanta. It's a four-way race. And then suddenly Lazio also look wobbly. And you think, oh, this might be the most uh, interesting one. I heard of something really um, important slash interesting that there's a possibility that we could have up to six Italian teams in the Champions League this season because... If either one of the Milan clubs win the Champions League, highly unlikely, and Juve or Roma win the Europa League, and none of these two that win make it into the Champions League, I think then we get six teams. But I, I think this, this is uh, how, how it is. But then you don't have the teams in the Europa and the Conference League as far as I know. Maybe there's a cap on five. I probably should have researched that. But uh, if that's the case, that would be really, really interesting. And yes, Europe is basically the big story uh, for any Serie A fan. Italy have five teams in the semifinals of the European competition. That's more than England, Germany, Spain individually. And combined, those three nations have as many as Italy. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. And again, I said it in my Europa League uh, review video. It is a little bit the luck of the draw. However, um, at least it shows that there's some good work done in Serie A as well. And maybe, just maybe, could it be that a little bit more the pragmatic approach to games are now helping more in Europe as again, as we've seen with Real Madrid last season. And now, the, you know, the free-flowing Napoli is out, the free-flowing Lazio are out. So just saying that. But already teased it, but we have to talk about the Juventus verdict. Now, uh, it is important to uh, state that this is a suspended verdict. The um, Italian Olympic Com Com Committee, who kind of had the appeals court, uh, upheld all the individual suspensions. They didn't make any uh, statement that the uh, uh, punishment for Juve is undue. However, well, what they say, they are missing a proper just justification for the deduction of 15 points, especially since the prosecutor only was looking for nine. So this was not properly uh, reasoned with. And then they basically sent it back to the Italian uh, uh, league court and say, you know, uh, look at this, this, this again. And now here it could happen that either they find a proper justification for the 15 points or the sentence is reduced 
or it goes uh, to zero. That's the old, also not, not the option. The other thing is, and that's probably the more concerning part, that the legal process can really, really drag on because now that the verdict is made, the reasoning for that can take up to 30 days uh, maximum to come down. Uh, and then until the court can come back with, with, with another verdict, the season might well, well be over. And it's very uh, important that these things are happening before the end of the season. But we also know that the legal system and, as, and uh, the little knowledge I have of it Italy that those things are working slower than almost anywhere else, that this may drag on and maybe that uh, any uh, punishment will come for the next season. So we still may have Juve in there or UEFA come down with, 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 with a verdict and say Juve cannot qualify. So uh, it's still very much up in, in the air. I have readjusted all my calculations to have Juve back with the 15 points. However, as I said, anything could happen. And maybe uh, the Italian league comes back with a nine point punishment and that could be a final word for them. Uh, but they have to speed up those processes because it really, really can affect the league. And this was a huge talk, talk, talk about among most of the, especially uh, the Roman teams who of course uh, are in Champions League battles themselves who are basically saying this cannot be. I mean, the one thing that works a little bit in favor, it's only about Champions League and not about the championship itself because that ship has sailed. So yeah, very, very interesting days in Italy for sure. But let's go back to the previous weekend. You know, between the uh, the two legs of the Euro, the Euro European Pian ties, and as I said, it was all conditioned by that. Not so much by Lazio, who got an easy 3-0 win. Immobile scoring a penalty, uh, who then got involved actually in a tram accident. That, 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 that's another, uh, a little bit under... Uh, Report the story, but seemingly he is fine. Uh, well, I haven't heard is who is at fault, <laughs> whether he or the, or the tram was at fault. Felipe Anderson and then Antonio get the other two goals, Ampadu being sent off for uh, Spezia. Spezia kind of nearing relegation trouble. Uh, I was not looking forward to the Bologna Milan game. Uh, no, 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 not only was it a rare three o'clock kick kickoff, but that, that was no, uh, not the problem. But I heard very early on. Peel is going to make 10 changes to the lineup. And if I know one thing is that the Milan A squad is really, really, really good, but the depth is missing. And sure, sure enough, with in a minute, Sansone had given Bologna the lead. However, what I saw then from Milan surprised me big time. Because they actually, the B squad, the absolute B squad, really showed up and actually played well. Should have taken more than the equalizer in the first half. Had a clear penalty denied on them. Uh, which, penalties in Milan is becoming a really sore spot, spot for me. Because so many penalties are given for Milan that are then immediately retracted. And then there are also penalties, there are quite a few penalties given, uh, not given, that where VR uh, kind of fails to uh, do the right thing. So, um, as I said, a little bit of a sore sport spot for me. Pobega with a nice e e equalizer. There were enough chances, there was enough pressure, there was enough there for Milan to win this game at a Bologna team who at that point was in a really, really good form. Uh, it also has to be said. So uh, kind of a pause positive, but then you only got a point and this was kind of the third game. So yeah, you're falling further behind Lazio. Napoli similarly saving their uh, players, but also even made a comeback, hitting the crossbar, but it was a crucial point for Verona, who you see uh, very high up there on my board. Uh, but you know, it was kind of a blah performance, all focusing on the return leg for Milan. Napoli can do it. I honestly felt Milan could not do that because uh, top four for me, yes, the glory is in the Champions League, but if for sustained success, it is more important to get this top four spot again. Because if I make it now, let's say, uh, Champions League final, but I lose it and then I play next in the U Europa League. Yeah, it <laughs> doesn't really work out that that, that well. Uh, however, Milan still, it was a good result also because Inter love managed to lose at home to Monza. And again, a typical Inter performance of the past few weeks where Inter is creating enough chances, uh, doing their best to miss most of them uh, in rather comical fa fashion and then completely Letting the game slide and uh, Monza have, have been in really good shape as well. I mean, they will not go down. 
was also interesting because he know the leadership of Monza was the Milan le le leadership. And then it's Caldiarola who gets the winner, former Inter player. However, he grew up as a Milan fan, so uh, I don't know how much uh, that paid pl played in there. But again, uh, if I would have made the, a video last, last week I definitely would, would have led with another really disappointing uh, Inter result. However, it's all now a week later, it all doesn't seem so dire, although Inter among the teams uh, fighting for, for the for, for Champions League with a realistic chance. I'm not sure if I will count Atalanta in there. Um, other team that look uh, uh, the most in, in trouble on the other side, if they start converting their chances, who knows? Uh, Salernitana, credible point at Torino. Lecce could have probably put themselves a little bit out of uh, relegation trouble if they would have gotten more than a draw, uh, draw at home to Sampdoria, Sampdoria team that's dead and buried. Um, for, 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 and then Juve, a second loss in a row. They lost to Lazio and they lose uh, to Sassuolo. Uh, De Frel scoring the goal. Yeah, the 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 the, the in an abject performance by Juventus again, probably more or less all focusing on the second game against Sporting, and so it was Roma who were actually a big winner of of the round despite Cristante missing a pen penalty, but uh, on the re, uh, on the Rio Bove uh, scores, but uh, they got an easy three in the wheel. There was also a Pereira penalty. That was uh, saved, but by the time uh, Lorenz Verde Green had already made it 2 0. And then Tammy Abraham laid on the 3 0, and that all meant that Roma actually moved into the Champions League spot ahead of Milan. And then Fiorentina earned a draw against Atalanta, which hurt in a way in the league both teams because Fiorentina cannot make up enough ground to put themselves in European contention. They will not make it into Europe via the league next season. Uh, and Atalanta probably can hold on to a conference league spot potentially uh but it also depends on, on the result of the cup but Joachim Mele uh but we'll look at uh, for further Mele gave Atalanta the lead uh Cabral equalizes there as I said lots of European action in the interim and also Juventus verdict in the end we go to the past round where Verona another big win over Bologna the last two weeks for Bologna were kind of uh <laughs> Verona had having a 2-0 uh, lead and actually making a run for, for, for it. They are now have a chance of actually surviving uh, this relegation campaign. Salernitana also rather safe. Sassuolo just won again against Juve, losing 3-0 at Salernitana. Seems about enough, I think, for Salernitana to survive. Pretty big win. Uh, Lazio, though, a disappointment, losing 1-0 at home to Torino and on a uh, goal coming by Ilic and the thing is that Sarri then was moaning and groaning not only about Juventus but that uh, the pitch was bad and everything did not work for them and it's all uh, crappy in any, 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 any way and it's kind of you know <sighs> that's the one thing I have to say about Milan remember when they lost to Spezia at home because of a glaring refereeing mistake none no one was complaining about that. You hear very uh, rarely real complaints, but you see kind of teams that have a little bit of a sm smaller mind. There's always there's always some conspiracy around, and this is what worries me a little bit about Lazio. Sampdoria um, and Spezia, it's a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> it doesn't help either one. Sampdoria will not get out, and Spezia uh, cannot get any distance to, to the relegation zone. Then the big uh, liberating blow for Inter after qualifying to the semifinals with the Derby della Madonnina. And again, I have, I am afraid of how this will impact those two teams. They might uh, save players exactly at the wrong time of the season. Um, it will be a great spectacle, but um, after a kind of rough first half, Lukaku gets on scoring for the first time since round one from open play. Also, Lukaku is now not uh, suspended for uh, the semi-final uh, return leg against Juve. And why? Because the executive power of the league president said, yeah, the court upheld the suspension, but the president said, no, this is not, not right. Not the right president to, to be said, but he scores two, sees the Pabrozovic and Chalnoglu, and then he also assists Lautaro Martinez. Is Big Rom back? That is the question, of course. Fiorentina, 
uh, did it a little bit the other way around of what they had midweek, uh, having a very quick 2 0 lead, Kwame and Saponara. Uh, however, before they have, Monza equalized and even had a goal, but it was a handball goal. Um, a disallowed, and then Pessina with a penalty. The 59th, a comeback, and Monza is more or less really, really, really safe now. Udine win 3 0 over Crem Cremonese. Um, Milan over Lecce. Um, Cannot tell you much more than Leao being outstanding. And if Leao is outstanding, then Milan is also outstanding. He's a difference maker. He's an absolute difference maker. Uh, who, whenever he gets the ball, there is danger for, 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 for the opposition. And he very often then, even when he had a long run, where he just flies past other players, he is st he still then usually finds the right decision as he did find Giroud against Napoli. This this time around, Milan probably should have already led uh, before that um, without creating many many chances. But then from a Tonali corner it comes back Tonali again. We whips it in. Leao completely free can head head it in, and then the second half there were a few more chances. But in the end, it's uh, Leao um, who runs through. Makes it 2-0 in the to Settle all the nerves that I was having about this one. Because it would have been so Milan to mess this one up. Uh, Juve against Napoli was actually the top clash that I kind of expected. Um, it had some shades of Napoli-Milan with Juve having very little possession. But uh, Napoli having a lot of empty possession. There were not many chances, especially in the first half uh, going. Um, but if there were chances, it was always falling more towards Na Napoli. I think there was a foul by Gatti where I don't know why he didn't get sent off for that. I think that he had the feast. He got straight into the face. VAR did not intervene. However, VAR did intervene late on when Di Maria thought he had scored a winner uh, in a nicely played counter-attack where uh, Juve got the ball. However, there was a foul exactly when they got the ball uh, that was first waved on. And this is exactly... Uh, VAR actually getting um, with two wrongs getting it kind of right because A you have to send Gatti off but uh, B I thought that the referee had waved on I mean it's, a, was it really, really that clear and obvious and it was so far back already so I don't know this uh, it was a little bit, bit of an odd one but in the end I think there at least the right decision was found then uh, there was another goal I think by Vlahovic that was called offside but the ball was already clearly over the line in the build up so, but I felt that late on, actually, uh, as much as Napoli controlled the game, that late on that um, Juve were closer to the winning goal. Um, and then he brings on Raspadori for Quaratskelia, who was, again, in, in, in effect, if I feel that Quaratskelia is got too wound up and Napoli as a whole got too wound up by the Milan game. For them, it's great that this is over. Uh, because this could have derailed this easy if, 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 if it was a little bit tighter. They, they needed Kakarka of the lift and, you know, Raspatori coming on, uh, Elmas and then Raspatori ro rockets it in, in, into the net. It's a 1-0 win for Napoli, only the third at the Allianz Stadium. And this time, you really feel with Lazio losing, Juve, of course, losing to Na Napoli. Napoli have now again the distance. And surely now they're going to win the championship for sure. And it is within Epsilon. Um, and then yesterday evening, I'm wearing Atalanta more, more or less because of, of that against Roma. This was also a huge, huge one for especially Roma to stay in the match. But I, I know there's also quite some rivalry between those two clubs, especially from the Atalanta fans. Uh, it was a first half to the worst of the Not much was happening. Uh, maybe Atalanta a little bit more initiative, but then uh, just when Roma got back in, into the game, uh, Zapata plays a partial, which puts it in uh, in the 39th minute, giving Atalanta the 1 0 lead. And then uh, again, the game uh, got a little, little bit more alive. Roma tried, tried, tried to come back. However, Toloi uh, makes it 2 2 0. Um, Seemingly sad settling game, however, Pellegrini then scores to pull a little bit more edge on, oh, but in the immediate uh, horrible goal, can we say Coco Minus plays it, and I don't know what Rui Patrizzi was doing, he plays it right back to Coco Minus, uh, who then finds it into the empty net, and that settles, that settles the game. Huge uh, blow for Roma, uh, it also means that in, 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 in a table, they are now on scored goals behind Milan. Now, goal difference is the same, and you know, they, uh, as long as there's no head-to-head -head goal, the, the, the difference is a tiebreaker. That's why Milan is now ahead by 
the virtue of having scored more and more goals, but also conceded more uh, goal figures. So very, very even there. Um, Lazio and Juve still above, but it's getting much, much tighter. I mean, uh, Juve is only three points away from fifth. Inter also in there. I think this can be a really, really tight race, of, or will be a really, really tight race for Champions League spots. And again, don't underestimate what is going to happen in the European competitions, because that will play a role in there. Atalanta at the moment in seventh, uh, which assuming that Inter or Juve win the cup, uh, I, again, my, my graphic is more maybe a little bit misleading. Because if Fiorentina wins it, then it also goes back. I probably should correct for that. Uh, on the bottom, uh, we see that Alice Verona is now within a point of getting out of it. And our space is now odds on to go down. Uh, which we also see in the expected static now, Ellis, uh, for the first time in a long time, again, outside of the relegation re re zones, whereas if you look at the um, uh, top seven, it is more or less the current standings because, uh, you know, ratings and so on play a role. However, the final stretch stretch for most of these teams are rather, rather dicey. We look at some final stretches for the upcoming games. We first have um, the Coppa Italia return legs between Inter and Juve and Fiorentina Cremonese. Fiorentina more or less through. Inter Juve, of course, is still very, very level. As I said, Lukaku can play in that, that one. Uh, tensions will be high in that one, for sure. Inter having quite some rivalry games come coming up. But on the weekend, it's high noon. Let's first take the title race. Napoli, if they win against Salantana and Lazio don't make any point, uh, don't uh, drop points, Nap uh, Napoli are champions. However, this round is all about the duel between Rome and Milan. Uh, we have first a Roma Milan tie, and you saw they are fourth and fifth level like this. This is a huge game for both clubs, and I told you this is my number two against my number one. Uh, in Italy, although Milan is the clear number one, so of course I want Milan to win, but uh, if Roma makes the Champions League, I would be a very, um, I would love it. I also would love it if Milan, let's say, finishes total four, Roma makes fifth, and then Roma wins the Europa League. I would love that too. And then Inter Lazio. Um, maybe not, a, and, and it's uh, played relatively early as far as I see, which is a little bit so surprising, but that is another big, big one. Another one that I would watch if I wouldn't go to the last game uh, <laughs> later on. And then we have uh, Bologna Juve, also an interesting one. Because I can see Bologna do something, but they have uh, hit hitting a rough pitch at the wrong time in a way. So yeah, that was it from me from Italy. Please let, let me know what you thought about uh, the happenings. Who do you think will finish in, in the Champions League? Will any Italian team come home with a European trophy? I think that we will see at least one Italian team come home with, with a trophy. Let's see. In any case, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.